Welcome to the latest pack break on Wax Ecstatic. I'm your host, Matt Salmon, and we are diving into 1994. And if you follow the news about Major League Baseball these days, it sure feels a lot like 1994, doesn't it? Oh, man, I thought we were done with that nonsense. It had, uh, what, almost 25 years of quote-unquote labor peace uh, between the players' union and Major League Baseball, but that is uh, certainly not the case. Now, I've been planning on opening up some 1994 tops for a while, and I, I think it's just pure chance that uh, we're doing this show as Major League Baseball is trying to figure out how to put on a perhaps 50-game season. And uh, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be great. But we will discuss some of the differences between 1994-95 and what's happening now in 2020 in our next program, which will be coming up this Friday, June the 19th. And while we'll touch up a little bit on the then versus now angle of uh, baseball labor issues, and I can already give you a little preview. I think it's a lot different now for a number of reasons. And I think Major League Baseball and the Players Association are going down a very, very dangerous road here. Uh, where you could have said a lot of the same things in 1994. But as we saw, eventually fans came back. Now the good news is the game is still here. The game is going to be here. The game of baseball lives it's uh, just unfortunate that the uh, boys playing Major League Baseball aren't doing it. And that brings us to 1994. Series 2 packs I've got here. And during our next show, I will discuss why the Series 2 packs are a lot easier to find than Series 1. But uh, we're going to go back into 1994 here. And for the first time since 1994, I am opening up 1994 baseball cards. Now, that may not seem like a big deal, but if you've listened to the podcast before, you know it actually is kind of a big deal for me because the last year that I was a complete baseball card collector, buying new product left and right, was 1993. By 1994, I bought a little bit here and there, but I started losing interest in the hobby for a lot of the same reasons that many of you lost interest. And certainly I came back over time, but I always set the mark off, the uh, the point of demarcation, uh, the, the DMZ, if you will, for my baseball card uh, thrill days. It's always ended with 1993. And from like 1994 till about 2004, 2005, I really didn't have much interest in anything new. But uh, this is big for me because by not only uh, physically not showing any interest in any of these cards, mentally and emotionally, I really had no desire to open up anything during that 10 or 12 year stretch. So uh, this is different. I, I've never had any desire up until now to reopen some uh, cards from the years that I stopped collecting. But we're going to do that. And it's not just because there's an awful lot of 1994 happening in 2020 in terms of uh, the, the baseball scene. But we do need to discuss the 94 tops set. And we do need to, as I've kind of joked before, uh, peel back the scab here. We, we do need to take a look at baseball then, baseball now, and the baseball card industry. I think one good thing about now compared to 1994 the hobby's a lot healthier, and even though you have fewer card shops, even though you have fewer and smaller card shows, and even though there is somewhat of a monopoly with, you know, exclusive rights going to for baseball tops, for hockey, upper deck, you know, how everyone's kind of split up here. I, I think the hobby is in a much healthier situation now than it was in 1994. All right, enough talking. Let's open these up here. Again, we've got some Series 2 packs here, each containing 15 cards. And as the wrapper proudly exclaims, look at that, two tops gold cards in every pack. So we've gone from 1993, including one tops gold. Now we have two in every pack, plus tops 
finest 1994 cards randomly inserted. So now we're inserting inserts to get people excited. Measures of greatness. Now here's the other bad thing about 1994 cards. Uh, you hear that? That crack? Yeah. The UV coating. All right. So measures of greatness. Darren Dalton, the late Dutch from the Phillies. Joe Baver. I believe that's how we pronounce his name. Baver? Baver? Bover? And you can see, let me try to get in the light here just right. You see that right there? A little bit of that UV coating peeling off. One of the downsides of the UV coating days. Your Montreal Expos draft pick, Jose or Josu Estrada. So we will peel his card off of the Rob Ducey. That was a fun name back then. All right, Corey Snyder, looking like a beat dog there. That's one of our tops gold cards. The other one is Mike Perez of the Cardinals. <laughs> Hear that snap. Tony Gwynn. So here's Tony Gwynn in action, but again, sadly, the UV coating peeling off here. So uh, this is one of the many downsides, like I said, of cards from the mid-90s. Carlos Bye Bayerga, as Chris Berman would say. Uh, nothing fell here on the bat. I am just checking that out there. That is a great shot of Bayerga, though. Uh, more of a casual shot, but pretty cool. With the old uh, Cleveland Stadium behind him. Of course, uh, Jacobs Field opening up in Cleveland in 1994. Well, we've got Tom Glavin. I'm going to skip to that one just because the other cards are stuck. So we've got Tom Glavin. So nice little Hall of Famer there. Ah, Ken Griffey Jr., We'll go ahead and take that one. Good thing, too, is that these particular cards at this point in the pack don't have that UV coating wear and tear, at least not that much. The Glavin certainly doesn't. The Griffey's only got a tiny, tiny bit there. All right, so a couple back-to-back -back Hall of Famers, followed by Steve Hosey, not a Hall of Famer. Bob Welch, and then the uh, handful that are kind of stuck together here. We've got Timmy Spear. The Big O, Arrestus Destrada. And Jeff Shaw. All right, let's plow through the rest of these cards here while we got a few minutes. All right. Let's go ahead and, you know, you hear the term crack wax. Well, let's crack some UV coating because <laughs> that's that terrible sound it makes. All right, 1993 draft pick Jeff D'Amico. Looks like a high school picture there. All right, we've got Jerry Goff. Another draft pick card. Boy, they were hot on the rookies then, weren't they? David Cooper of the Mariners. Coming attractions. More rookie cards. Brooke Fordyce and Bill Pulsifer. We've got Charlie Hayes. Your top's gold. Charlie looking rather somber there in the Rockies' dugout. It was a long 1993 season. The other gold here is Steve Scarsoni. That's another great Harry Carey name. I'm out heading for the Giants. Steve Scar Scarface. Riel Cornier. That was a fun name from the 90s. I remember him. Great player for the uh, Red Sox. We've talked about him before. Mike Greenwell, underrated player from the day. Speaking of underrated, Mark Langston with the Angels. That was near the end of his prime. Jesse Orozco, who I think would go on to pitch for another 42 years after this card was made. We've got Phil Leftwich. Peel some cards away from Phil here. Ray Lankford. The X-Man, Xavier Hernandez. Mike Morgan, looking pretty pissed off with that uh, pitch right there. And Jack Armstrong, looking relieved. All right, let's open up the next couple here. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, I see Jeff Kent. That would have been something back in the day. Let's uh, crack that UV coating here. Let's start with Chuck Carr, the speedy Chuck Carr. One of the original Marlins. Another measure of greatness, a rather trim Barry Bonds of the San Francisco Giants. I got a story about San Francisco Giants, Barry Bonds, 1993, all together there. Uh, speaking of coming attractions, Turk Wendell, one of the strangest people of all times, and Steve Traxel, of course, 
Uh, Traxel, not with Bonds, but Traxel with Mark McGuire would meet up for a historical moment a few years later. Archie Cianfraco, we talked about him in a recent episode. Topps Gold, Roger Mason in the throwback Phillies uniform. That's a beaut. All right, Topps Gold Prospects. Norberto Martin, Ruben Santana, Jason Hardke, and Chris Sexton. The gold foil, more valuable than any of those four guys on a baseball card. Juan Longong Gonzalez, nice star card there. Uh, a man who had just one really good year back in the mid-90s, Dave Bourbon. I believe it was 93. Let me see. Well, he was 10-3. and three. I'll do some research on Dave Bourbon, but I believe he was one of those guys that just had one of those great years, and that was it. Steve Bouchelle in the middle of uh, breaking up a double play there. Dave Hansen of the Dodgers. We've got Todd Pratt in the Phillies. What do we got here? Tim Worrell. Not to be confused with Todd Worrell, of course. Again, Steve Hosey. I'm loaded with Hosey. David Segui here, hustling out a ground ball for the Orioles. And Jeff Kent throwing Chris Sabo out at second base. All right, last but certainly not least, our fourth and final pack of 1994 Topps cards. Are you waiting with bated breath? I know you are. You know, it's neat to open these again, but there's just something lacking about 1994 for me. I don't get it. All right, let's crack that UV coating. All right, our coming attractions, Jerry DePoto and Julian Tavares. Tavares would uh, be a bit of a red ass in his career. Paul Molitor, Measures of Greatness, one of the underrated, often forgotten about key members of the 1993 Toronto Blue Jays. They had an incredible lineup that year. Bobby Ayala of the Cincinnati Reds. We've got Paul Kilgus of the Cardinals. Let's uh, peel some cards apart here. All right, Chris Gomez of the Tigers, one of our top gold cards. Who's the next one? Oh, there it is, Damian Easley. Very early in his career there. Is that a rookie card or it might be a second year card? I think a second year card. I think his rookie card's in 93, but that would have been worth eh, kind of sort of something back then. Charlie O'Brien of the Mets in action. Looks like he's about to get an Astro out at the plate there. The late Ken Caminiti. Boy, look at it. There, there's some meat and some needles with these two guys. Ken Caminiti and Rafi Palmero. You know, the story of Rafi Palmero is interesting. Ah, oh, speaking of meat and needles, we found Roger Clemens, too. So, I mean, just, wow. This, this is a lot of Balco right there. Whew. And uh, as we'll discuss, part of the reason why so many baseball fans stopped watching the game for many years, still some good players here. Roger Smithberg of Smithberg and Associates. Uh, we got Carl, what you talking about, Willis. Mike Williams. Peel his card off. Oh, I hate UV coating. Uh, we got another Topps Gold card here. Randomly inserted draft pick John Ratliff, who uh, had just as much success in the big leagues as my college friend, John Ratliff. And then one of the great 80s and 90s baseball names, Skeeter Barnes. We've got to talk about Skeeter Barnes because he's Skeeter. Also, we're going to try to explain, bring this up a little closer to the camera. We're going to try to explain this rather unique history here 83 84 85 disappears 87 89 91 like he was in witness protection for a couple of years we're going to discuss skeeter barnes we may have talked about him before but this is a nice way to end our look at 1994 tops well an interesting assortment of cards here and i'm just going to try to shuffle them all into one nice neat deck and let's put a star card on top no that would not be archie san fraco let me find one of the muscle men here that we were talking about. How about Clemens? We'll put Clemens on top. There we go. And we will talk more about 94 tops in our next podcast this Friday. I'm Matt Salmon. Thanks for watching the Wax Ecstatic Pack Break.